Good evening. Welcome to the regular town council meeting for Monday, March 4th, 2013, here in council chambers. First item is the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Town Clerk. Mm -hmm. Councilor Drake. Here. Councilor Hurley is unable to attend tonight. Councilor Kotkin. Here. Councilor Manusos. Here. Uh, Councilor McAllister is unable to attend, and Ms. Councilor Montaneri is also unable to attend. Councilor Roberts. Here. Deputy Mayor Consul. Present. And Chairperson Hemmen. Here. Thank you. <coughs> we have one presentation tonight and then two proclamations. Um, so let me start with proclamations. Thank you. Tom, if you could come up, please and Mary and Dan and Kathy. We're very fortunate tonight to have um, Tom Santillo, who's the exalted ruler of the Wethersfield Rocky Hill Elks. He's here to present um, Mikey's place with a grant. And I'll let you say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Good evening, everybody. Like Donna said, I'm the exalted ruler at the Weathersfield Rocky Hill Elks. And throughout the state, we have an opportunity to um, donate to community charities. And this year, Mikey's Place won first prize for $1,500. Again, it's a donation. Please accept this. And thank you very much. I hope that you do well for the children. And thank you for everything you do for the children. We just want to thank you from our family and uh, from the entire Mikey's Place Foundation, as we call it, uh, for all your help and support. Um, it goes uh, to the maintenance, the preservation of it, and um, that will continue to keep it up upgraded for all the years to come for more generations to enjoy it. So thank you very much. We'll keep trying to see what we can do and help support you in the future. Thanks, Tom. We have um, two proclamations. One is for Girl Scouting. Um, and whereas March 12, 2013 marks the 101st anniversary of the Girl Scouts of the United States of America, which began in 1912 when Savannah, Georgia, native Juliet Gordon Lowe gathered 18 girls to provide them the opportunity to develop physically, mentally, and spiritually. And whereas 1912 was also the year in which Girl Scouting started in the state of Connecticut. And whereas for over 100 years, Girl Scouting has helped build millions of girls and women of courage, confidence, and character who act to make the world a better place. And whereas the Girl Scout Leadership Program helps girls discover themselves and their values, connect with others, and take action to make the world a better place. Whereas through the dedication, time, and talent of volunteers of different backgrounds, abilities, and areas of expertise, Girl Scouts of Connecticut offer this Girl Scout program to over 47,300 girls in the kindergarten through grades 12 through the state of Connecticut. And whereas the Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest honor in Girl Scouting, requires girls to make a measurable and sustainable difference in their community, assess a need, and design a solution, find the resources and support it to make it happen, and complete the project. And whereas core programs around science, technology, engineering, and math, environmental stewardship, and healthy living help <clears throat> help girls develop a solid foundation in leadership. And whereas today more than 59 million American women are Girl Scout alumni, 
and 3.2 million girls and adult volunteers are active members. And now, therefore, I, Donna H. Hemon, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of Wethersfield, do hereby applaud the Girl Scouts of the United States of America for over 100 years of leadership and expertise as the voice for and of girls, proudly proclaim March 12, 2013, as Girl Scout Day. In witness thereof, by the authority vested in me as mayor, I hereunto set my hand that caused the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed this fourth day of March, 2013. And one last, Paul, if you'd like to come up, please. Hi, Lori. Nice to have you here. We have a proclamation for the American Public Health Association that is proclaimed April 1st through April 7th, 2013 as National Public Health Week. And whereas this year's theme is public health as ROI, save lives, save money, and focuses on the return of our investment in public health and prevention. And whereas it has been demonstrated that supporting good public health programs will result in healthier communities and reduced cost in treating disease. And whereas National Public Health Week reminds us of the fundamental role that our own state and local health departments play in prevention and in keeping our communities healthy and safe. And whereas the town of Wethersfield, together with its neighboring towns of Newington, Rocky Hill, and Berlin, receives quality public health service through its regional health department, the Central Connecticut Health District, now in its 16th year of service. Now, therefore, I, Donna H. Hemmond, do hereby proclaim April 1st to 7th, 2013, as National Public Health Week in Wethersfield, Connecticut. I encourage my fellow citizens to join me in this celebration and acknowledging the value of our investment in public health and its impact on the quality of life in our community. Do you have a camera? Do you want a picture? Yeah, we'll Speak now or forever. You did such a good job on the other one. Yeah, my yeah. camera locked up. He couldn't get one. We would like to mention a few of the things that we're doing for National Public Health Week. And Lori, you have your do you have your cheat sheet? Bring that over if you would. Oh, you got it on your head. All right, great. This is Lori DiPietro, our health educator. Thank you. Um, National Public Health Week is a week that they designate every April. Um, and as you heard, there's a different theme every year. So we try to plan different uh, projects around the theme. So what we're doing every year is we, um, I write press releases and articles to the local papers to inform people. Um, we're also going to be having displays at the Weathersfield Library and all the other local libraries um, for anybody that is coming in um, to receive any information. We're also looking, uh, looking to work with the local police departments to conduct child safety seat checks that we will be coordinating. And also looking to uh, make the Weathersfield Town Hall and other town halls if they're not already a heart safe workplace, which means that 10% of the workforce there um, are trained in CPR or AED. So. We were just recognized several weeks ago. Yes. Heart Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will have a presentation um, of their annual report from the Health District.
that's probably going to take a few minutes to warm up. Uh, so maybe I have a couple of things I could say before <laughs> that happens. Oh. oh, it warmed up. Great. My name is Paul Hutchin. I'm the Director of Health for the Central Connecticut Health District. We're the local health department. We serve Berlin, Newington, Rocky Hill, and Wethersfield. As you heard just a few minutes ago, we have been in operation now for 16 years. And tonight, I would like to present a few slides, there aren't that many, on our fiscal year 11-12 annual report. This annual report looks like this. Uh, council members, you do have a copy uh, in front of you tonight. We have posted this report on our website and this uh, PowerPoint, if it's not there today, it will be there tomorrow posted on our website. You're going to see the address also for the website. So I just wanted to touch on a few of the highlights of our year and what we've been up to. And again, most of that is going to be in this annual report. So again, we're the local health department for the four communities. We have a population of just under 97,000. There are 21 health districts like ours in the state of Connecticut dating back to the late 60s. We have a 12-member board of health. Those board members are appointed by the respective town councils. Each of our towns is a town manager, a town council form of government, so it's pretty much the same in each community. The council appoints the members. Every 10,000 or part thereof, you get a member on the, council, on the board of health. Uh, we don't have any of our board of health members here tonight. It's Diane Dute, Grant Golub, and James Strito are your representatives to our board of health. You can see our employees, they are eight full-time, four part-time, we're 9.5 FTEs. And there's our website, ccthd.org. The finances for the health district, this is for last fiscal year. We had a per capita membership rate of $4.36 per capita. The average in Connecticut for health districts is actually over $7 per, per capita. So that's what's represented there by the town contributions. That's that 436 per capita times the 97 th some odd thousand uh, members. Uh, we've been pretty successful in grants recently. Hopefully this will continue. Not so sure, but uh, we have been successful in grants and we really run most of our programs that I'll be mentioning with the grants our program fees, et cetera. Those are permits and licensing. And you can see that about 83% of who we are are the people and the benefits. So we've developed a strategic plan. We have five goals. They're outlined there. And our annual report and the slide presentation try to follow those five goal areas. So how do we promote healthy environments? This is one of the bigger areas for us because we have four sanitarians and a chief of environmental health. We're inspecting and regulating 800 licensed facilities. We oversee installation of private wells, private septic systems, and we investigate a whole variety of public health complaints, environmental health complaints, rodent problems, lack of heat in the winter, bed bug infestations, mosquito breeding in the summer, infectious diseases, that type of thing. How do we support good health at every stage of life? Again, these are the, the five goal areas, so this is goal two. Hopefully uh, you've heard about and maybe have been to our seasonal flu clinics. We're planning to do, we've just done over 2,600 people this fiscal year, and uh, we're hoping next year to do about 2,500. It's reduced a little bit because of the opportunities that are out there uh, for flu shots, but uh, this is all done with volunteers who are a tremendous asset to our group. They actually will go to your home and provide a home vaccination if you're not able to get out. And, and again, through volunteers. The uh, photo in the upper right there actually is one of our board, as our board chairperson, Judy Sartucci, working the pneumonia shot table at the clinics, volunteers again. We held a few programs last year, matter of balance, teen driving, safety. Uh, you heard about the car seat check for Public Health Week. These are programs that are typically grant funded. We collaborate, partner with others. For example, work with the police departments who have the trained staff to show individuals how to properly install car seats. And, uh, and, and that's how we, we accomplish quite a bit of what we do. 
We are still running our dental cleaning program. That is a free service to seniors. And we, are, we run that with a grant from the North Central Area Agency on Aging. We also have a pharmacist that helps with prescription drug counseling. If you uh, want to participate in that program, no charge. The dental cleaning is no charge. I don't know if I mentioned that. But uh, you, would, you would come into the pharmacist with a bag, the bag full of everything you take, all of your prescriptions, and they review everything to see if there's any issues or problems. We also have a Putting on Airs Asthma Control Program. This is a program, program that's designed to help families that have someone diagnosed with asthma. We actually will inspect the home, bring in a trained nurse, and help the families identify the triggers for asthma, and then ideally help to reduce those triggers and the, the need for hospitalization or an emergency room visit or something like that due to asthma. Another initiative that we have underway that's involved representation from all four communities is our ACHIEVE initiative. And we're fortunate to have great representation from each of the communities. We have a town manager, a town planner, the Weathersfield Parks and Rec director is on this group. And this group is looking at three areas, physical activity, nutrition, and tobacco, to see how we can make policy changes in the communities that are going to help people lead healthier lives. So for example, in the recreation area, maybe we need to do a better marketing of trails and bike paths and walking paths. Maybe there needs to be better signage and, and better uh, displays. Uh, we have some funding to help with that, so we're reaching out to the community. So it's really a, a collaboration with all four communities, looking at tobacco control with the housing authorities, maybe trying to eliminate smoking within housing authorities, look at policies on town properties, school properties, that type of thing. We're also involved with the Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. One of the issues that was uh, identified through their work was the adequacy of prenatal care didn't seem to be where it should be for our district communities, including Weathersfield. So we are working with that group to, to do a survey of providers to find out why is that and what could be done to help improve the adequacy of prenatal care. Surprisingly, at least in my opinion, it was surprising that we had that finding when you think of the level of health care or health insurance, I should say, that's available when we did a prior survey. So uh, a little bit unexpected, and now we're trying to dig into that to see what might have caused it. We have a, an emergency preparedness coordinator on staff that's funded by the federal government, and we're responsible for ensuring that we have a public health emergency response plan, all hazards approach. We do a lot of staff training, volunteer training. The picture on the bottom of the screen there uh, are the volunteers helping out at the flu clinic filling up the syringes, getting ready for the flu clinics. We also investigate reportable diseases. There are about 48 reportable diseases uh, that, such that if you live in our communities, they are reported to us and, uh, and some, most, uh, many of them are investigated. Continuing with the uh, public health uh, emergency uh, response area, uh, one of the things that we're responsible for is ensuring that we're we have plans in place in the event that there are medications or vaccinations that are needed within the community. So our, our flu shot program, our pneumonia vaccination program, is really good work on, uh, for us to be prepared, again, small scale with 2,500 people, but in the event of something large, uh, we hopefully would be able to uh, pull together our volunteers and, and uh, offer that service. We do uh, get involved with assisting town staff with the sheltering when in, this, in the event of emergencies. We've had some recent storms and sheltering openings, and so staff was, was out there looking at, uh, looking at the shelters and making sure everything was okay from an environmental health standpoint. Improving and maintaining quality service. This is going to become a key word for us as we pursue accreditation through the National Public Health Accreditation Board. There's a a voluntary effort underway for accreditation of local health departments in the nation. Uh, it was just announced that the first 11 local health departments have been accredited. So see, these are some of the ideas that, uh, and, and efforts that we've undertaken. We have our strategic plan. We have completed a, uh, an assessment of community health needs back in 2011, but we're going to look to repeat that uh, again because we have to complete it in a, in a 
manner compliant with FAB. We've just published our community health report card. I did leave copies of this at your seats tonight. This is also going to be available on our website and uh, this will be helpful in our assessment. And what we did this time around is we did a 10 year look back of all of the information that we typically gather. And I'll just give you a list from the table of contents and again you can, you can take a look at it at your leisure. Uh, but we, we pulled together information on demographics, socioeconomic indicators, birth and mortality rates, leading causes of death, unintentional injuries and falls, teen births, low birth weights, prenatal care, obesity, asthma, HIV, AIDS, sexually transmitted diseases, physical activity in schools, and smoking. And we've gathered the data from uh, the state source, federal sources, et cetera, pulled together in many cases a 10-year comparison so we can see what the trends are. And, uh, and it's kind of interesting when you see that. And we're hoping that other departments within town government, the schools, other planning agencies and groups and so forth will find some of this information helpful. We try to use evidence-based practice when we're running our programs and choosing our programs. And again, we're putting together our plans to pursue national accreditation. We have been successful in the grants, new sources of revenue. We have proposals to bump up our fees a little bit next year for our licenses and permits. Hopefully, uh, uh, some, it's not something we've done for several years. We are looking at digitizing and trying to make available the information that we have so that it be online. The bottom item there, uh, interns, we've, been ha we've had an intern with us uh, pretty much every semester for years now and very helpful in our community health programs. They help out in so many ways, it's been great. So one of the areas we'd like to try to see if we can uh, accomplish is the online posting of the restaurant ratings which are really a result of the inspection. So it wouldn't be just the number, they got an 85 or a 92, but we're trying to come up with a rating system and figure out a way we can connect our database to the online so there's some technology issues that we have to figure out. And uh, we have some data, new data sources that we're going to investigate as we work to develop our community health assessment followed by a community health improvement plan, the CHIP. That's the plan when we pull together our coalition of folks to help on the assessment, that's the plan that we're looking to get implemented within the communities by all of our community partners. That's the end of the slides. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions if you have any. Do counselors have questions of Paul? Councilor Cocken? Uh, Paul, the, uh, the flu, it looked like a flu epidemic at the be in the fall. Uh, could you just sort of take us through how uh, Weathersfield fared with the flu this this winter? It was one of the one of the worst years uh, recently uh, for us and for the state. It seemed to hit the seniors and the elderly harder this year than prior years. So we had a lot of reported cases as compared to prior years. I didn't bring the numbers with me, but it was much higher than previous years, pretty much statewide. Uh, one of the things we saw also, the research I don't think is complete yet, but the effectiveness of the vaccine in the seniors wasn't at the level that it needed to be, which probably resulted in so many cases. Uh, you know, there's, I'm, I'm sure plenty of you heard of folks that I got the vaccination, but I also got the flu. And that's the effectiveness, unfortunately. And so it was, they, they had the right strain in the vaccine, but they still were getting the flu anyway? Right. Right, and so if you look back, uh, the state provides updates regularly, and if you look, they, they have it posted actually on their website in a graph format. It's maybe three or four years prior, uh, and, and the, the last three or four years have been relatively quiet, comparatively speaking, and this year you saw the peaks and the high numbers. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's partially, the partially I suppose, Mother Nature, and somehow uh, the, the way the, the uh, the disease transmitted, and, and unfortunately, uh, you, you're, you're communicable, you're able to uh, infect others prior to showing symptoms yourself. So that's one of the tricks of this disease is that it, is, it, goes, it, it goes unnoticed while you're infectious. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Councilor Roberts? Not a question, but a comment. Um, way back when, 16 years ago, was this district one of the first uh, districts that got formed in the state? No, actually, the first distri district was 1969 in Westport Weston. Oh, okay. Um, I remember when it got formed in Weathersfield, though, it was kind of a leap of faith, what we were getting into and how would it work and would Weathersfield get its fair share of services from you. So I think it's worked out great. And thank you for uh, and your staff for all you have done and accomplished for us. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Very interesting. And if you ever have any questions, certainly call me. Uh, all the contact information is there. Thanks a lot. Next on the agenda, there's no um, hearings for public comment this morning or this evening. So under general comments, are there any members of the public wishing to speak? Yes. On the left side from the back? You have to come up in the in the um Good evening. Uh, my name is Romeo Lefebvre. I live at 28 um, Caroline Drive in Rocky Hill. Um, it's been such a nice meeting that I, I'd rather not be the bearer of bad tidings. However, I came to Weathersfield from Rocky Hill. You know, there's no buses that run. So on the weekends, I drive to the TJ Maxx Plaza, and I park there. I do most of my business there. I join Panera. Um, I go to the uh, liquor store there. H&R Block does my taxes. I go to CVS. I go to Walgreens. And I go to Marshalls. So I'm familiar with the area. Well, on the 12-22, 2012, I couldn't sleep. I, I left my house around 12 o'clock and I went to the uh, kilt, the bar that was open. Um, I stayed there from about 12.15 till 1.55. I didn't have any drinks. Um, I went out to see my car, to get in my car, and my car was missing. All right? I returned to the kilt, tilted kilt to report a stolen vehicle. I called, I had Mike Melillo call the Weathersfield Police Department and to report a possibly stolen vehicle. Mike uh, put me on the phone. Um, dispatcher Hale said that, oh, they tow from there. I said, why? <laughs> they tow from there? Um, it's a well-lit uh, area. The uh, tilt area is dark, almost uh, pitch dark. And the managers have to walk the, uh, the waitresses out to their cars. All right? So I didn't think it was wise for me to park my car out there on Friday night with patrons coming out inebriated or what. So I went to a place where I always park, and I parked there, high visibility, all right? and. Ironically, it was the worst place I could have parked in 2,000 parking spots, and my car was towed. When I asked dispatcher Hale why wasn't it posted, he says, they don't have to post there. I asked him where, who towed it. He said, Central Garage. I said, where are they? He says, here's the telephone number. Give them a call. So that was the beginning. Now can I go to the end? Today, I went over to speak with um, Paul Doyle. He wasn't in. I spoke with Tom Spinella, his aide, who I had been sending emails. Uh, I've been working on this for 10 weeks. 
I also went to speak with Mary Alice Hughes at Tony Guerrero's office. I'm supposed to have a meeting with them about predatory trespass towing. Sometime this week. Okay? So as I am leaving in the state capitol, I run into a uh, state capitol security. And I happen to get in a short conversation with him about the towing, because I thought he might tow my car because I wasn't in the visitor spot. All right? And he tells me he worked as a patrolman or an officer in Hartford for over 20 years. And then he started to tell me that there was a major problem years ago with the tow companies not reporting to the local police department that they had vehicles that they have impounded. He told me that the owners were picking up their vehicles, not reporting it back to the police, neither the tow companies, and they were stopping on the street the owners of their own vehicles at gunpoint. Are we going back there? Is this where we're going? When the tow companies do not have to report, it's a courtesy? Is that where we're going? I really don't think so. So I've been in touch with Jeff Bridges. I've been in touch with Lieutenant Herwith in Glastonbury. I've been in touch with Deputy Chief Keener in Rocky Hill. There are procedures that should be out there. And the first thing the officer told me today, he says no vehicle should be approached put up on a, on a tow truck until before the police have been notified. Now why isn't that done? Four cars were taken off that parking lot. I do not have a CRV tan. I have a CRV ch chocolate brown. The, the individual, Latif from Central Garage, couldn't identify any car, so he wasn't there. No plates, no VIN number, he was looped, did he loop? I don't know where he was, but he couldn't describe one of the cars under any condition. Now, I submitted the audio files, okay? I bent to the DMV. I put in a, a complaint. I got my FOI file, and I thanked the DMV and Weathersfield Police Department for providing me with the audio files and, and, and the facts of my case through freedom of information. It's the only way you can get any information from anybody. Subsequently, Bo, <laughs> Bo Berman calls me from Fox. He's doing an investigation on overcharges from Central Garage. This investigation was going on for a year. They had a stack of complaints. Last Tuesday, I called the DMV to find out when the hearing was because I told there was to be a hearing because I found out through the FOI that Central Garage didn't have any insurance. <laughs> My mouth is getting a little bit dry. If I could have a glass of water, I, I, I won't persist with this much longer, but I think it's a very interesting story. So when I called to find out about the hearing, I find that there is no hearing, which they could have told me the week before, but they didn't. So when I persisted on that Tuesday morning, because I finally found after a month that Travelers was an insurer, but Praetorian was not. So I called up and I found out that Central Garage was under suspension because they hadn't come forward with their insurance. Well, he says, that's fine. I found their insurance. I'm going to put in a claim, if I can, against their bond. <coughs> so I requested from Ann Howroy the notification of cancellation of the license, which she emailed me at 1119, and I submitted to Bo Berman. Bo Berman sends me back, wow, how did you find out the Central Garage was suspended? I said, you're an investigative reporter. You're on this case. Why don't you tell me? So anyway, just so happens that day, there was a video 
there was an investigative report <laughs> hit the news 5 o'clock that night. And they couldn't put the part where Central Garage was suspended at the 5 o'clock, so they put it in at the 10 o'clock. And Bo Berman, Bo Berman went before the commissioner, I believe her name is Curry, and presented her with a tow ticket that he had in his attempt to see if they were still overcharging on February 15th, the day after the suspension. So they were towing under suspension. So I did a FOI for Wethersfield, and I found out that they were under suspension, and they were towing from the, the mall on the 16th. So now I'm doing a freedom of information against Hartford for all the tows that have been done in Hartford from the 14th to the 26th. <clears throat> because miraculously, Central Garage had its license reinstated the very next morning. So there's where we are. Okay, so one of the things that I requested from all the police departments in the area is standard operating procedures. What do you do in the event that a trespass tow is about to occur? Okay, all I got was a bunch of old files that had nothing to do with it that basically deal with police tows. But there is a form out there, H-114, that is a dual form for police tows and trespass tows. The DMV has put it into disuse, but there are DMV regulations that don't necessarily tie back into the law, as Jeff Bridges found out. I don't know if he has any comment of what he found with his legal team, et cetera. Mr. LaFave, can you yes. please summarize for us? Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm basically done. Okay, because I spoke to Jeff Bridges on Friday. And I gave him the information, I emailed it to him. And I'm just trying to find out where we're going to be in the future. Are there going to be standard operating procedures? Or are there, is everybody going to be in denial that tow companies can just come out to private property and take vehicles, impound them, and overcharge them, as I found out? Where are we? That's what I'd like to know. I'm done. Thank you. We'll have to get back to you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to speak? Yes. Ms. Wells? Sheila Wills, 336 Hartford Avenue. Um, I'd just like to make a brief comment about the Wilkes Farm situation. Um, I was astounded when I first read that um, the property was going to be sold to the developer, and I was really gratified when it was reversed, and I'm so appreciative that it's going to now be used as a farmland. But I just have to comment on the other side of that deal. The idea that the proceeds from the um, sale of the, of the Wilkes Farm will go to um, buy the development rights to benefit to a really small group of, um, of the citizens rather than go to the um, open the open fund, um, excuse me. Well, um, it just, considering that some of, some of the members of the council are gonna be directly benefiting from the sales, it just doesn't smell right, so that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wells. Other members of the public wishing to speak? Mr. Sikas? Lee Sikas, 117 Wells Road. I have a couple of things I want to mention. Number one, I was offered by AT&T a, a good deal about telephone and TV reception, but I didn't take it yet. Now, if Cox is the only way we can get our town council meetings at home, is anything being done for people who have like AT&T or satellite to uh, 
hopefully someday have access to our town council meetings as well. I believe there is already access for the ATTU verse. There is. It's in, I don't remember channel, the If you go channel. to channel 99, you can pick any town in Connecticut that has AT&T service and watch so the I'm movie. not aware of that, okay. Yep. Thank you. That's one thing. Another thing is uh, we have a couple businesses that have been went vacant last year. One was the Liberty Tax Place. Uh, the other one was uh, the rental store next to the cleaners on Sestine Highway. Both these businesses have a single step to get into. They've had them for years. I would like to see somehow, some way, even though it's not a major renovation, that uh, future occupants be required to put in a ramp for a single step at the entrance. It's really, uh, whatever type of business might be there, might be one that somebody might, like might myself, might want to participate in. Another thing is the cost factor that I'm wondering about. I've been helping a friend out on Somerset Street for a long time now, getting his drugs, his homebound, groceries. The MDC work that we have been having done, they would drill uh, maybe uh, eight by 15 foot in the road and dig it up and fix the pipes, whatever. Is anybody overseeing what they do? Because the reason I say this is, take Somerset Street and several others. There might be a dozen places where they cut out the spot and patched it and did whatever they had to do to the pipes. But many places, at least five, at least four or five or six, on Somerset Street, on Somerset Street you can see where they cut a eight by 15 line in a blacktop, but they never uprooted that pavement to repair anything. You know, that stuff is still cracks in the blacktop that are gonna be where the road is down faster in the long run. And this is on other streets too, but not as, how many, I don't know. But really, if you're drilling, you know, spaces in the ground for nothing, it's just gonna damage the roads faster, add to the cost factor, and, uh, those are two things we don't need. And I just think that somebody should be uh, checking up on them. Maybe they're doing better now at finding where they have to locate the pipe. But the problem is uh, a lot of spots and other streets too where the road was cut into but never uprooted to repair the pipes. Once they complete those, Lee, they will repave that area to um, the way it was prior to them doing the construction. One of the issues right now is the asphalt plants are closed and because of the weather, so those will be opening up in the spring. No, no, that's, that's but they'll the come back that's and not, That's not what I'm saying, uh, Mayor. There are spots where they did last year, they repaved where it was repaved, but there are spots where they dug into the road, cut into the road, not dug it up, but cut into it, and probably you know, with the intentions of digging it up, and never dug it up. That's just damaging our roads, adding cost to the process, and uh, that's one thing we don't need, more cost and uh, less life to our roads. If some of those roads are done, and uh, those spots from the road are there for nothing. And uh, today is March 4th, you know what that means. Best day to have a parade. May, 20, May 25th, I believe, uh, May 25th. It'll be a Memorial Day Parade. I'm just coming up before you know it. And uh, a week from tomorrow, a month from tomorrow, April 5th, we'll be having our, our fundraiser dance uh, at the Pitkin Community Center to benefit the Owner Buck Wolf Nature Center. Just want people to know that uh, signing tickets available and it will be fun. And uh, hopefully we'll see some of you there. And hopefully uh, we will have a, a, lot, a nice spring because it's coming soon. Thank you. We're all ready for it. Mr. Cobb? Good evening. I'm Robert Cobb, 99 Meadowview Drive. I uh, want to start by uh, complimenting the town council and uh, 
town manager Bridges for the great work you've been doing, keeping down our costs, maintaining our budgets, unlike our state and federal governments. Uh, it was a very nice article in the Hartford Current and uh, had a couple of uh, people in other towns express their envy at how well uh, our town was doing in terms of controlling costs and uh, economic conservatism. I, I'm coming here uh, tonight because uh, uh, I read an article in Weathersfield Life about uh, property on Goff Road, and uh, the article was confusing, and I'm still a little confused, but uh, I'd like to say that it, you know, it would be nice if we could all have a piece of property that adjoins or abuts a land that will never be developed or be minimally developed. Um, I haven't been fortunate that the land behind my house is open space and Wynwood Village pays some extra taxes or something, I don't know. We have to maintain it. And I paid a little extra for my house for that reason. Uh, comparable houses on the other side of the street went for less because they didn't have open space. Uh, I'm not even sure how this, this piece of property came into play because it's my understanding that uh, the, the Goff Road property was not on the Conservation's Commission as a desirable piece of property to be conserved. So, you know, I'm not really sure what went on there, but now as I understand it, um, a couple hundred thousand dollars of, uh, I don't say town money, I say taxpayer money, uh, is going to be used to buy the development rights. Um, and uh, I don't know why we're involved with buying this property or buying developing rights from a builder, uh, especially for this piece of property. I don't know what's special about it. I don't understand. Uh, you know, it would appear that uh, the benefit of the town involvement would only be restricted to a certain few, and that would be the people in the immediate area surrounding this piece of property. Uh, how does the town benefit from, you know, spending $200,000 of taxpayer money. I don't, I don't get that. Uh, and what I also don't understand is that even though we're spending $200,000, the builder does have the right to build a house on the property. I don't, I don't get that. And um, I don't get that the town you know, is, is spending $200,000 of taxpayer money, but yet I can't walk on the land. It's, it's private property. It's not town land. So I'm confused about that. Um, and it's also my understanding that the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, whose job it is uh, to uh, oversee such issues, made a decision that um, this uh, transaction should not take place. And uh, I'm here to make sure, or I'm here to urge you folks to not overturn the Zoning and Planning Commission's decision. Um, now, sometimes I wish that you folks got a stipend so I wouldn't have to feel guilty when I express disappointment with your actions and stuff, but uh, it's my understanding that, uh, Councilor Kotkin, your property abuts the uh, the, the Goff Road property. That's not correct. Where, where is your property in relation to it? It's about 300, 400 feet away. Okay, so uh, you got a pretty good sight line to it? So, no? um, it's through my uh, neighbor. Okay, all right. Um, but your neighbor and you would uh, benefit from not having this land be developed. It's just kind of, you know, it's a common knowledge about real estate that if the land is gonna be uh, undeveloped, it's a desirable thing. Get to listen to the birds chirp and you don't have to listen to the kids running around, okay? And I just don't wanna have to pay for that, you know? And I, I think, uh, council, you should recuse yourself. And I think any other council members that, you know, should not be doing a friend, a, a friend on the council a favor by voting similarly 
And uh, if there are any relative, any council members have any relatives that live in this immediate area, they should recuse themselves as well. Uh, I just don't think it's right that uh, uh, we be involved in this whole uh, situation with the builder. You know, uh, I don't see that the builder's doing anything wrong, but he makes out pretty good. He gets to keep the property, he can still build the house, and yet we're paying $200,000. Uh, so I, I just don't understand that what I consider to be a misuse of taxpayer funds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Other members of the public wishing to speak? Mr. Young? <clears throat> Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank you, Mayor, for letting that man who came up first tonight to talk, it seemed like he talked much longer than five minutes. I think that was a nice gesture to let him continue talking. And I do that for you as well. And you do that for me as well, I but I, I, I just want to mention. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that is a very nice gesture. I, we will not get that from the Board of Education. We're told to go sit down. You're finished talking, but at least here you do let us go a little for, a little longer. Thank you. Um, I, I, I know I saw the same article in the Hartford Current regarding the Wilkes uh, farm and this golf road. And, uh, you know, again, we shouldn't be owning any property that we're not using. I said this more, more than once from, from this podium and elsewhere as well. Uh, and it just, we have much more important things, Mayor. We're in drastic financial straits up at the state capitol. Here we're looking at reductions from the state capitol, not only this year, but going out. We're looking at more reductions from the feds. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at all kinds of bad problems all around us. And we're dealing with this thing that we don't even need. Hope you vote no on it. Don't override the board of ed, uh, the uh, planning and zoning. And as far as uh, I know it was mentioned about conflicts of interest, I, I don't really know where your home is, Mr. Uh, Cockins, in, in regards to that. I, I never even thought of that. I, uh, you know, I know you're in that neighborhood somewhere, but we do have other conflicts of interest in the town as far as public officials go. I call it nepotism. But uh, that's another day, and I've talked about that in the past. And I know there'll be another night I'll talk about it. But, you know, there's, there's many articles in the paper regarding uh, where towns can save money. You folks have talked about shared services for so long and never did much except for the, that, the man that was up here earlier, uh, Paul Hutchinson, the health, Paul health, Hutchinson. Uh, the health group, the health uh, district. Otherwise, we, we haven't really done anything, have we? Uh, like combining the Board of Education finance, the Board of Education and uh, the townside finance and, and, and the purchasing for, for both the BOE and the townside. Uh, there's so many things that you could incorporate and you haven't done it. And here in the Hartford Current, they're, they're talking about this. You've talked about it for years and haven't done it. I don't know when you're gonna get around to it. Maybe you're gonna wait until the reductions keep coming out of DC. We're going to lose $85 million billion this year between now and October 1st. And then from October 1st on for that next year, there's going to be another 85 or more billions of dollars that won't be, that are, things are just going to keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And Malloy, my friend Diversion Dan, he's going to keep cutting and finding ways to eliminate or only promote himself and that car tax. Oh, there's a, I, I'd like to see it go, but on the other hand, we, that would give us all the people that live in apartments that don't own homes, they would have, as I said at the last meeting here, they wouldn't have any vested interest. They just, Mick Romney talked about 53% of the people work and 47% don't, you know, they don't really contribute tax-wise or whatever, uh, I think that's a pretty good number. The sad thing is if Malloy takes the tax off on cars, that 47% is going to get 
closer to 50 or 52, is, the whole thing is there's going to be more people taking than producing in this, in this state and in this country. And, uh, you know, we've we, we got to have producers. Producers pay taxes. I want to retire. And, you know, I can't because of these taxes keep going up. Anyway, I know that you're, you're working on more revenue sources. Uh, at your last meeting, you talked about the, uh, the school bus cameras. And, of course, the Board of Education talked about it the other night. Uh, and I guess they've, everybody's happy now. You're going to be able to collect uh, uh, $243, $34, whatever it is, for everybody that drives by the school bus. You're going to get them on camera and send them a bill. You know, George Rue has been up here many times, and he talked about cell phones. You should be doing that, too, about cell phones. Uh, many times I've come close to having accidents on the highway with people with their cell phone up to their head. My cell phone sits on the seat until I get to where I'm going, and then I'll, I'll pick it up. But you've got to do something with the cell phones, too. And we had the police here tonight. I don't know why they're not picking people up, uh, riding around town with uh, cell phones to their ears. There is a fine to it, right? As of January 1st, we all, all we working people found out that we, uh, we had to take a little less home from our paychecks due to the 2% uh, for Social Security. And uh, a lot of us, a lot of people are you know, looking at our paychecks and saying, gee, I, like, I, I used to go out to dinner all the time, but I'm going to start slowing down on that issue. I, I used to spend money somewhere else, and I'm going to slow down on that issue. You've got you to gotta factor that into your deliberations for the budgets. You've got to factor all these things in, something that you haven't done in the past. You just kept taxing, 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 and taxing. No, no consideration who pays and how they get the money. We're getting hammered all different ways. Look at our MDC water bills. Look at our gas bills. Look at, you know, look at the electric bill and all the taxes, telephone bills, all the taxes that are tied into that. Nobody cared when they, were, when they signed on with it. But you hear the words that you're saying down in D.C. now about this sequester. Oh, that's, that was a dumb thing. $85 billion hit. Boom. You know? But the other ones who approved it. So they didn't think either. They never think. So anyway, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I'll be back later. Thank and you, again, Mr. I appreciate the extra moments and time. Thank you. Thank you. Other members of the public wishing to speak? Mr. Standish? <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Lee Standish. I live at 278 Hartford Avenue. Firstly, I want to thank all the people on council for their volunteer services for this town. Uh, I, too, am a volunteer on a commission in town. I serve as an alternate on the Planning and Zoning Commission. We recently had a decision on the Goff Road property. Uh, it was a considered and deliberative decision in regard to land use within the plan of conservation and development. It's what we're charged to do, just as you are charged to do different things. I would ask that you give credit to your deliberative boards and commissions, and you uh, do not take up an override of that decision. I think it's a decision that we made in the best interest of the town of Wethersfield. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Standish. Other members of the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll go on to council reports. Are there any reports of committees? Council uh, Roberts? Yes, the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee met last week. Um, Dolores, are there vacancies on there that are pending? Yes, there are probably seven. Right, so I'll give We're you a waiting. call during the week and we can try and figure out who the appointing authorities are or who's supposed to recommend them and what they represent because they're having problems getting um, a quorum. Um, and then May 4th is their annual educational seminar, which this year is on car fit. And there'll be um, more information coming out about that. People can uh, sign up for an appointment and get all sorts of information about the car that they own and whether or not it's appropriate for uh, them. 
Thank you. Councilor Drake? Yeah, uh, I attended uh, the high school building, school building project, that, again, regarding, again, the high school renovation. To give you an update where they are, uh, the, the, uh, basically, things are going very well. They, they have to have everything into the state by March 19th. Basically, the design work, uh, the budgets, and all the th paperwork they need to, to uh, get everything proceeded so we can go out to bid. Everything seems to be on track. The design's good. They're looking at the budgets, they seem to be on track. Uh, the only issue, the only reason I'm even bringing this up is just so people kind of be aware of what they're struggling with a little bit. Uh, there is PCBs in the building, and uh, it's kind of like the new asbestos, I guess that's the right word for it. Uh, it's that type of thing to chase down was started about two years ago. Uh, in 92, the last renovation, everything seemed to be abated, but they weren't looking for that. And there's, again, there's a little bit in the building, and when they did the original tests a while ago, it was there, not that much. They did more tests. Now, the issue that's come up, and the only reason I'm keeping you guys aware of it, is that the state has requested that the uh, EDA, EPA, uh, uh, I guess, provide approve the radiation plan, which is kind of a new thing by March 19th. So they are hustling to get that done. And of course, the issue is when you're working through government agencies, is not necessarily they work at the same timeline we do. So that hopefully they'll get that resolved. They've had Jeff on it. We've had another, who's Jeff has worked with another consultant who has a little bit more expertise to try to push this thing through. So other than that, everything seems to be going good, but this is probably may could be a little hitch because they're really pushing this March 19th because that would delay the thing if we can't do it. And uh, we won't really want to be balls out this summer. So, but, so hopefully the next two weeks that gets resolved. If not, we'll probably have some more discussions about it, see where they go. So. Okay, thank you. Other reports of committees? Okay, uh, council. Oh, sorry. No problem. Um, insurance met, I guess it was either last week or the previous week. A uh, couple of items, I mean, we're still in very good shape on the health insurance, um, probably a, a million below budget or so. Uh, there is one area, though, where the trend isn't as good, and that's in workman's comp. Um, and it's not any one particular area. It, it's uh, for a while back, it was in the Board of Edits. That's not true necessarily anymore. It's actually several areas of, of the town employee workforce. Um, but we've had a few sort of difficult years in a row, and I think when we see our uh, workman's comp budget, we're gonna probably see about $150,000 increase um, for the next fiscal year versus the most recent one. So while the property casualty is going reasonably well and health is, is really going very well, workman's comp is not, and um, I know that there's some, some work that the town's doing to try to reinforce safe work practices among the uh, among the employees, but that's that's one trend that uh, is not favorable for the town currently. Can I ask a question? Did they have any particular trends that were identified? It uh, it it really seems to come from uh, several of the departments. I mean, there's some from police, some from education, some from public works. Um, so I, it's not as though they were all repetitive stress or lifting or whatever. It's it's a variety. So uh, Jeff, maybe you can. Talk a little bit, but the uh, our insurance uh, agent of record is talking about having you know some seminars with department heads in town to reinforce safe work practices and so forth. Uh, Council Member Kotkin is absolutely true. It's kind of across the board. It's no one department or one single issue. And I think what drives the increase somewhat is we have a relatively low worker comp premium on the town side. It's four hundred. It, and I mean relatively low, it's $453,000, so it doesn't take a lot of claims against the workers' comp policy to put us in a negative environment. So we've, we've held that 453000 for the last three years. In the last couple of years, we've had one or two big claims of, you know, it, it happens. Uh, kick us over where the profitability, unprofitability for KERMA. So I think we're going to experience that next year, and the goal is to smooth that out with some training, with some revisiting of uh, workplace safety issues, which our agent of record is working on, and see if we can smooth that out. Okay. Thank you. Um, under council comments, um, I'm going to start tonight. Um, <coughs> just to let the public know, the council is aware of the planning and zoning um, opinion regarding the 824 referral for the Wilkes Farm and the Golf Road property transactions and staff and the town manager 
are still ironing out some of the final details, um, but it is likely that these items will be on the agenda for discussion and potential action at our next council meeting, March 18th. Other council comments? Council Roberts? <clears throat> yes, one of our favorite topics, the um, what's going on over at Keisha's, Keisha Farms on Highland. Um, I'm gonna sound like the deputy mayor. I've been getting phone calls. Um, That's on my list. And, uh, you know, I live near there, so I see a lot. Dave lives near there. Yeah, it's no question for us. <clears throat> what, uh, I know that the, the manager sent us information from MDC. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I'd like to know specifically, where are they, where in, are they, are they working in town, these people now? Because the... Yes. Okay. Where? I don't know the exact location, but this site is only for in Weathersfield work. They're, they're not, they may have, VMS may have other crews in other towns, but they're not staging here and going there. This, this work site, we've been assured by MDC, is only for Weathersfield. It just seems, it gets, if it's possible, it gets worse looking every day, and it's winter, so I, I can't picture that they're doing large amounts of work. But today there were like four payloaders there. The, the pyramid look has diminished. I don't know what they did with the earth. But They're trying to get it out of there. For the today there were four payloaders. There's a ton of trucks. There's people's cars. There was a, they used to have um, a young kid there all summer sort of holding a sign, truck entrance. Today they had a guy parked in a car with a Massachusetts plate on. Um, you know, it seems like it, it's never going to end, and I don't know where they're going or what they're doing, but it, it just seems like when you drive around Wethersfield, I don't see that many projects that are using those, tr you know, those trucks are at the sites. So I know you've gotten the answer from MDC, but and I, it just seems like there's something can going ask, on there more than, more than um, what they keep telling us. Can I add what, uh, and again, we can go back to MDC and ask again, and, we'll, and I'm sure we'll get the same answer. But is it the town council's request for them to vacate the site? I, I don't know. It looks to me like a construction site instead of a farm that's renting land or whatever. I mean, it, it, it looks hideous. I don't even know if they, they should be doing that on that property. I, on the other hand, I understand that there's neighbors in other parts of town don't want these trucks and the, and the site in their street. But it just seems, I don't know. It, need, it needs to be looked into. And I know you've they looked into a, it several MDC times. MDC has an inspector on site all day to make sure that only, only the contractor that MDC is contracted with is on the site. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, we can go back and forth with MDC. I can ask him to come here and answer questions. But at the end of the day, if we don't want him there, we'll tell him. No, I mean, that's for, that's, for the council I mean, to decide. I don't, I, can't. Think, I don't think anything short of that's going to really resolve the issue because they're going to be there. And they're gonna, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be noisy. Um, we just approved uh, system-wide another $800 million for to upgrade these sewer lines and water lines. Um, if we're not wanting them there, we'll, we'll tell them to move. We'll have to find them another spot. If I may comment, mm -hmm. since we're talking about um, I, I, I thought I was under the impression that this site was to be used when we were doing the Meadowgate area and the Randy Lane area, and that was supposedly, from what I read, that was all this site was supposed to use for. Now, I, I, I really I appreciate the town manager's report to us that we received the other day. Um, things that interest me is, you know, with all this equipment there, I think there's, the town should be taxing them on this equipment if it's going to be there that long. Um, I, I understand. I know. So there's issues there that we can't do that, but that's just... My, my opinion. Um, I, for one, did follow two trucks one day and they went all the way to the busway and back. So, uh, and unloaded some soil and brought some soil back. Unfortunately, I did not have access to having a camera with me. I usually do it with my iPad and didn't have it. But I, I do have people now, uh, several people that have, uh, retired people that have some time on their hands that are uh, going to take it upon themselves to follow these trucks. I don't think they should be doing that, but uh, as, as Councillor Robert said, so I, I travel all around town. I don't see that much construction activity happening in this town where they're, where they're that active. And I know they put up more silt fencing. Uh, they leveled the piles a little bit. And what they did was they just spread the piles out because I watched them one day to spread the big pyramid out over an entire area of the field. 
Um, and I'm still questioning, you know, if, if some of the soil is being brought in and it's silting into the stream, which then ends up in Millwood's Pond, I know we're, I know we're getting the, the, the silt part is being held back, but, you know, the water going through the soil and we don't know where the soil is coming from, is it bringing any contaminants into anything? I mean, there's, there's a whole pyramid of issues here. My, my opinion, that part of town, that, that site should have been used for the Randy Lane, um, Randy Lane and the Meadow Gate, and it should have been shut down and cleaned up and, and left. I, and, and I don't think it's, I don't think it is the MDC. I think it's a private development that's doing it under maybe contract with MDC, but I don't know how much the MDC really has to do with that at this point. They're out there every day. Well, no, I know, but, in fact, but on site. I understand, but, but these guys are, they're like sub subcontractors. No, they're I'm the prime. Not, okay. Uh, if the council so, wants it off the site, we can get them off the site. I, I think with the phone calls I've been receiving, I don't know how many Councilor Roberts has, but I, I just don't think it's, you know, it, I think the time has come to clean it up. This is my opinion. Yeah, it's just a quick question. Is, is the landowner allowed to just uh, rent it out for that purpose? I know it's a farm <clears throat> thing, it's got more open. It's temporary. So I could temporarily rent my backyard for a whole bunch of bulldozers and stuff like that. I just can't imagine I could do that. I don't know. Maybe we got to need to have some discussion <clears throat> more about it. Do you want MDC here? I mean, what do you want to do? Because I, I, I'm, you know, I get the phone calls, I get the, the comments. If you want to make well, changes, I, I'd like change. to, I'd like to know when it's going to end because uh, originally it, w it was supposed to be Randy Lane and Meadowgate, and it seems to have taken on a, a life of its own. Um, so when it's going to end, I'd like to know from Mike Turner if there's any kind of violations of um, town ordinances, town zoning permits, anything like that. And is anyone checking the dirt that's being brought in in terms of contaminants? And I think we do need to have a discussion at, at, you know, at the council. And it's not, you know, I know, Jeff, you're, you're probably sick of us all asking these questions, but... It looks like it's a disaster. It's a blight in that area. Well, and let me just finish. Every year. I know that. I know that. And, you know, you're doing, I mean, you're asking the questions and you're going with the information you're being told. But I do think at some point we should discuss it and then decide what we want to do with it and what our rights are. If, a, if it's a private property owner who leased it, do we even have any rights to deal with it or are we stuck with it? So there's a bunch of questions well, that need answers. As members of the MDC, I'm sure if we expressed our displeasure with them, as members of the MDC, they'll make whatever changes we're asking them to make. I think, you know, well, that's true. Truth for me, if someone had an answer that said when it would be the end, mm -hmm. and we could get comfortable with that, maybe right. we just live with that. Right now, you don't see any end. You don't, I don't even know what that is. So I was even told at one point it, was, it wasn't supposed to be an, even an active site all winter, and it was all winter. So right, and they decided to points. do as, as much as they could on manholes oh, during the winter time to, yeah. to get it out, to be done faster. Um, Again, you know, well, this is the, I think, the third spot in town we've put them because there's nowhere else. But if we don't want them there, we can move. We well, can ask them to move. Can, 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 we need to know how many other projects there? they're actually working on, too, in town so we have an idea. Why don't they just stay on the, where they are when they're doing the project? Why do they have to go somewhere else? You've got to store material somewhere. You get those trench boxes are big. they got to store No, somewhere. I understand, but they're storing trucks there. I, the dirt wouldn't be that big of a deal, but there, there was, like, Jerry said, there's a lot of trucks there. Right. That's that. Now, they just, someone just dug up my street recently this fall for this That's winter. I understand, but all their no, stuff, or well, whatever it was, but they were all parked right on my lawn for the whole time. So, I mean, nobody parked somewhere else. I just, I mean, it was a nuisance, but whatever, you know. I'm just <coughs> not sure why that's different. But I'm mean, like, again, for me, I live near there. Truthfully, it doesn't bother me that much, but I guess it would be nice if someone said, we're going to end it here, then you can just live with it for a while and you know it's going to end, you know. Jeff, the only other question I had was how many other projects in town are they actually working on? Um. Maybe it would be easier to have them come. I mean, I appreciate that it, you know, there were neighborhoods, Carriage Hill people in Carriage Hill didn't want the stuff stored on the open space there. And at the time, this seemed like a better option. But now, it's, and as I say, it seems to be like the story without an end. So. So do you want them to come here? I think that would be helpful. Okay. There's enough questions, I think, that that would be helpful. And maybe if the contractor came as well as MDC because, you know, 
they're the ones that are on, it seem to be running the day-to-day -day operation more so than MDC. Well, like I said, MDC, and we can ask them both, but MDC has a MDC employee on site every day. That's what we've been told. So I'll, I'll reach out to them and get these answers and see if they can come to, come to a meeting. Thank you. Other council comments? Deputy Mayor? Thank you. Um, I had the uh, pleasure of going to a meeting the other night for the, uh, um, and it was in the paper also, Town Seeks Ideas for Historic Buildings. Uh, the mayor was there amongst probably, I'd say maybe 30 or 40 people. It was a pretty well attended. Uh, it has to do with the, um, some of the buildings in, in Old Weathersfield, um, the uh, Masonic home, the uh, home next to the Masonic home and the uh, Comstock Ferry and um, some ideas that they have into putting together a plan. Um, my, my only, it, it was very informative actually, but um, my, my only couple of questions is, you know, the amount of the, the, the grant funding of $50,000 to study uh, privately owned properties, is, I, you know, I, I seem to have an issue with. And also what the cost benefit is, uh, is very questionable of what the outcome will be because I know that the, um, before the, Com the present Comstock Ferry owners bought the property, there was something similar to this that came uh, in, in front of the uh, planning and zoning and all and was turned down. And now it seems like a rehash of the same uh, type of information over again uh, to make this a more vibrant area. So I know there's a lot more to come and I guess April will be the, um, the time and we'll get the final report uh, and, and we'll, we'll, I guess, have another, another discussion, if I'm correct, the way they, the way they're talking like in the yep. meeting. Uh, so, and and I'll, I'll make it a point to go there, but uh, I just don't see, you know, um, in my own opinion, you know, what, the, what this is really going to prove to the town or, you know, how it's going to help out the, um, uh, the historic area in Weathersfield, in old Weathersfield. So I guess more to follow, but I just wanted to bring that up that I was there and the mayor was there, like I said, and some others, and uh, at least we're starting to get a an idea of what they're what they're trying to do and talk about. Um, just I mean, really briefly on the Gulf Road project, I know I, I've gotten a lot of calls and questions because it seems very unclear on what's going on. So what I've been doing the past couple of days is I, I just went back and uh, been uh, putting together all the bullets, and I, I'm, I'm calling this topic "Follow the Money" from when when uh, you know from the uh, original Wilkes Farm um, uh, purchase and what were the what the intents were. And, and what has happened since and up to the Gulf Road events. And I personally think they're both two different, uh, two different topics. But uh, I'll, I'll put that all together. I'll, I'll share it with my council members and I'll give a copy to, uh, um, to the deputy, um, to the town manager and, and perhaps we could even get something in the paper so people really get a good idea of, um, you know, what's happened, how it's happened and, and, and where your tax dollars are going. And then the final thing is we, uh, I, I received this last, I think all the council members got this on, a, on our last meeting and I forgot to mention it. Um, this came from a, uh, Andrew Jackson who lives at 36 Old Pepperidge Lane, apartment C1, and he sent some information about the presentation to each of the council members. Uh, the foundation of all American law is the United States con uh, Constitution. And he wrote a letter just um, outlining some information on the Constitution and the oath of office. and. Uh, the Patriot Act and things of that uh, nature. Uh, I'm going to pass this down to Dolores. Maybe you can get it all into the minutes, if you wouldn't mind, Dolores. And then, um, so if, if the public has any comments about it, some in interesting information in all three pieces of the document. And uh, I'd like those back, if you don't mind. If you wouldn't, just shoot them back to me. I'll come pick them up. But there might be something that the town, you know, townspeople are interested in and having it in the minutes. Uh, you could read it all. And if there's any discussion in the future, we could discuss it at one of our meetings. Thank you. Any other council comments? Councilor Cocken? Thank you, Mayor. I just want to mention that earlier a resident came and uh, basically suggested that because of the proximity of my house to the uh, Goff Road property that I had a conflict of interest. Um, I'm sorry that he left subsequent to his comments, but this is probably, this will now be the third or fourth meeting where, I'll, uh, where I've said that uh, I had that same question given the proximity. I asked the town manager to inquire the town attorney as to whether, in his view, whether in the town attorney's view I had a conflict. The town attorney concluded that I did not, and it wasn't until after that was relayed to me that I began participating in this, in the discussion about uh, the, the Goff Road property. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Okay, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you. Just one thing this evening. I, um, in response to the issue of the trespass to those, I know Chief Sisran, 
and Ray Ann Palmer have worked extensively on this issue and maybe they can brief the council on uh, how those are handled and the protocols and those kind of things. Good evening. Such a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm not sure what I should go over except for the fact that we do have uh, some procedures in regards to trespass tow. Um, there is a state law that we follow. Uh, we really don't have too much to do with it because it's from private property and um, by law owners of property can tow vehicles that they don't want on their property. They really, they have to notify us but they really don't have to report to us. This is uh, DMV are the, the true regulators of the towing companies in the state. Um, so I, I, unless there's a, a question or anything that you want to know, I'd be glad to answer. Yes, Mr. Drake. I, I was just, again, listening, I was a little confused what, what, where this guy was going from. But basically, if you park on some businesses, you know, whatever, parking, and at some point he said he doesn't want you there. He doesn't have to call you to say, or well, I have did, to know he, did he get an impression that nobody called you at all on this little deal, whatever that was? No, we, we got a call. Okay. In fact, that's when I, he tried to, he said that he was calling his car and stolen, and the dispatcher told him that the car had been towed by Central Auto and gave him the phone know, number. Knew about it. Okay. Yeah, they, they notify us. They, they call us and tell us that they're towing vehicles. Um, it, it does. I mean, even I am of the opinion that it does seem uh, somewhat predatory. I think that's a good word for it. Um, but it's not something that we can control because it, it's, we're not the regulating agency in regards to that. Um, we, we try to keep everything on the up and up. But uh, in the case of the Weathersfield Shopping Center, Nidets is the management company. Um, they post signs around the uh, parking lot saying that they will tow a car that's parked there overnight. As a, I mean, I don't think it's funny. I mean, Chimera's van, van was towed from the parking lot, and it says Chimera's Bakery right on the side. So I think they've addressed that issue now. Um, there were people that were at TJ Maxx doing uh, inventory, and their cars were towed also. But according to um, Central Towing, they've actually, uh, I should say, uh, Nidets, the management company that handles it for them, told me that they notified all the owners of the businesses or the managers of the businesses that are there and now they have a number to call if they're if any of their employees are going to be in the parking lot after midnight so um, I understand the, the consternation I truly do it's just that we are somewhat limited as to what we can do about it um, any other questions chief, yes. thank, thank you chief I, I also um, I have where my garage is in Hartford. We have a parking lot on the side, and uh, we put up rather large signs that say, you know, uh, that it's private property and any cars without authorization will be towed at the owner's expense. But the signs are really, really big. Now, I lived in, I have to say, I, you know, I, I see Knight's point, but I've lived in town since 1962. I've, I've never seen a sign, at, at, or maybe I, I was just not cognizant of, of where they're yeah. located. I, mean, I, I, see I actually went out and looked for them myself because so, so I've been in that shopping center. I, I could see the gentleman's frustration. I mean, if the signs were big enough, like you know, on some of the some of the I, posts and say, you know, after midnight your car will be towed. You know, I if think it should be in th huge should be, letters I, someplace. I, would, I, would, I agree. Yeah, I would think. I mean, that that put to me it just puts a bad taste in my mouth that you know the company's got a tow company's going in towing a car out. And you know, if the signs are big enough so you can see it and say, well, after midnight, I gotta get my car or it'll be towed, that's, that's one thing. But I, in, in all the years no. I've been there, I've never seen a sign that says you gotta get your car, you know, your car will be towed out it's, of there. It's kind of amazing that the law is mute on that, on the size of the signs, okay. or even if they have to have signs there. But the point is, is that uh, there are some signs there. They're hard, they're hard to find, sure. I agree. I mean, uh, and I do feel sorry for the gentleman and I, other people that have had their cars towed from there. In fact, we, uh, there was a, a, a police officer that had his vehicle taken, had her vehicle taken from there too. And it was for a very good, I mean, she was, the car was there, I think, uh, for a very good reason. But um, that we don't control that. I have no way of uh, stopping it. 
as long as they comply with the law, and from what I see, they have. Now, is it after a certain hour? Is that what yeah? You, it's so well. I believe it's after midnight. After midnight. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything you want to add? No. Make it abundant and clear that we have nothing to do with the toes. <laughs> They have a security company there that actually drives around. No, I think the description predatory towing is a very good description. So oh, I, I can just imagine sitting cars. behind that truck that's waiting for, just wait the for midnight, to strike midnight to start towing cars that's away. Fair, yeah, sure. That's not fair to make. That's no, not, not to me either. Yeah, that's I think maybe. Uh, you have that security. Well yeah, I, well, one of the reasons. I know one of the reasons they don't want the cars there is because of the snow. If we do get snow and they have to plow out a parking lot. I don't know why they would have to do it during the summer, but they don't have to have a reason. They can do what they want, pretty much. Uh, and there's not much we can say about it. I did make a suggestion to Mr. Knightitz that uh, they put up bigger signs, more of them, so the people have, can see it. Um, if there's one other thing, if there's no other questions, I do want to say one other thing. Um, I got a new car that doesn't, it's the, they don't make the Crown Vic anymore. And this particular car is not as recognizable, I guess, to the people that it's a police car. I can't drive home for lunch without stopping cars. And I've given out several tickets for cell phone use myself. And I know my officers have given out a lot. So uh, just to let you know that we are enforcing that law. Of course, we can't enforce everyone. And I'm sure there are people out there that are breaking other laws, too, that we can't enforce all the time, although I would love to. But uh, we do what we can when we can. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Cell phone ticket revenue goes to the state. <laughs> Naturally. The, the uh, school bus violations, though, we, we get a portion of that. Oh. Hey, towing, towing revenue, towing revenue with, with these persons, does it all go to the towing company or does it go anywhere else? Towing company. They get, they get it all. So. No, yeah. nothing goes back to like the civil fine. Okay. So no, there's no. nothing in it for the shopping center owner. Just, no. Just, no. Just, just, Yes, that would that would be uh, like a kickback. So this is like Repo Man, I would see on TV, yeah, right. on True TV. Well, it, you know, I had printed out a report. I was actually amazed at how many how many times we're notified of these toes. It's not just uh, the toes. This is just this is a report that's just from I think it is June May 16, 2012, till today. And it's uh, any idea hundreds. How many, any idea, hundreds of them? Are? Hundreds. Uh, so the, so it's the, repossessions, uh, tows from private property. Uh, it's multiple companies that are doing it. Uh, you know, like Park Ridge Apartments. I have uh, another towing company that comes in and does theirs on a regular basis too. And uh, if you're not parked in your designated spot, or you park in somebody else's designated spot, mm -hmm. the car's not going to be there. So uh, there, there are a lot of it. It's not just in uh, the shopping center, so. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Do you have anything else, Jeff? No, ma'am, thank you. Madam Town Clerk? Uh, no, I just have one comment that actually uh, Channel 14 does have uh, all town council meetings on demand. If you want to look it up, you go to WCTV channel uh, 14 and you'll be able to see them. Our cha channel 16 does uh, also show our meetings, but the ones on channel 14 are, you can go anytime and pick up any meeting you'd like to see from the town council. Thank you. Um, next under council action, we have acceptance of resignations. Um, actually it's appointment, not a resignation. Council Cochran. Thank you. Um, make a nomination to appoint Kathleen Kenya of 27 Meadowview Drive to the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities for a term from uh, March 4th, 2013 until June 30th, 
excuse me, March 4th, 2013 to June 30th, 2014, and to appoint uh, Nerman Durek of 123 Goodwin Avenue to the Insurance Committee for a term of March 4th, 2013 until June 30th, 2017. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Thank you. Next is 3A. Ray Ann, if you could come up for this. Um, the town manager had to step out for a minute. This is a, mi a hazardous mitigation grant authorization to apply for and accept if awarded a grant for generators for town buildings. Can I have a motion? A motion to authorize the town manager to apply for a hazardous mitigation grant in the amount of $245,000 to replace eight generators in town buildings and to accept the grant if awarded and to utilize capital improvement program funds for the town match of $81,750. And a second? I'll second it. Yes, this is a grant that the Physical Services Department requested authorization to apply for, and essentially it would allow us to apply for um, funds to pay 75% of the cost of replacing generators in eight of our town buildings, and each of those town buildings is involved in our emergency management response or our storm response. So, for example, we would replace the generator in this building, which is our emergency operations center, the physical services building, each of the fire stations, the ambulance building, the nature center, which would become a shelter for animals, for families with animals, and for the community center. And if you look at the documentation that we provided, the generators range in age from being installed in 1970 um, and to the uh, most current one, which is Town Hall in 1998. And Sally Katz, the Director of Physical Services, is here. She has more details if, if you have any questions. The other thing that we will do is if we can, if the gas flow is sufficient, we will replace the generators with natural gas generators, which will be both cost savings and energy savings. Do councilors have um, questions, Councilor Kotkin? Yeah, Sally, uh, maybe if you want to come up. Sure. Um, this this has to do with the uh, the town hall generator, um, and the question I have is: I think we were in a position where we couldn't. Uh, I think when we didn't have power, where we could run the essential facilities of the building, but we couldn't also run the library when we lost power. With this new generator, would we would the library be able to stay open, or would it not? One of the plans that we were hoping to do is to utilize potentially the older generator that is currently here to place in the library if we needed to be able to use those spaces and keep the new generator, which has a, a greater capacity and better energy efficiency for use in the emergency command center. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Drake? I, I was just gonna say my years on the CIP liaison, it seems like the list is littered with these things every time you turn around. It'd be interesting to see if we actually got this because this would knock the list yes. in half. Not, not money-wise, but they're just they're everywhere, so, and it really covers a lot, and it never can get to it. You know, so be interesting to see. Any other questions, comments? If I may, just to expand on uh, that, uh, Councilor Kotkin's comment, wouldn't it be possible to put a larger generator to run the entire facility here? Or is Not that the way the buildings are architected. They're actually two separate buildings and don't share systems. Okay. So the generators are independent. Well, and even with the, the improvements made to the whole building, when we renovated this building, they still kept them separate like that? Is that yes. That's unfortunate. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the um, sale of town property authorization to dispose of three Chevy Cavalier vehicles. Can I have a motion? Motion to authorize disposal of three Chevy Cavalier vehicles, two through auction and one by sale as salvage. A second? Second. Mr. Town Manager? Thank you, Mayor, <coughs> excuse me, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, two of the three vehicles have structural issues due to undercarriage rusting and cannot be repaired. Uh, one was involved in an accident and is now a salvage vehicle. So 
we'd ask to dispose of these through auction as we typically do with unusable vehicles. Any questions of the town manager? Just do you know the years by some chance? What years are they? 2002. All of them? Yes. 2002. Thank you. Any other questions? We have a motion on the floor. All of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Next on the agenda is 4A, bids, award of bid for Willard Pool Chlorine Delivery System. Can I have a motion? A motion to award a bid for the replacement of the Willard Pool Chemical Control System to Construction Services of New England Incorporated in the amount of $28,500. And a second? Second. Mr. Town Manager? Thank you, Madam Mayor Council. Uh, this project continues the upgrade to the Willard Pool facility operation in 2011. Uh, Three filters were replaced with two new filters and tanks. The tablet chlorine delivery system and controller replacement is phase two of this upgrade. Uh, they, we received an excellent low bid for this project and confirmed the firm's ability to do the work. Um, CSNE, CSNE renovated the Willard Pool in 1996 and is familiar with the pool facility. Our pool consultant has worked with CSNE and has recommended them for this project. Kathy Bagley is here this evening to answer any questions as well as Ms. Katz. Do councilors have any questions? Deputy Mayor, so Kathy, if you could Hi, come up. Kathy, really, really quickly. Um, just looking over the bids, I mean, it, it's quite a difference in the, uh, in the dollar. I mean, one, one of them's like, you know, 2015, 18,000, and one's, one's over $20,000 difference. What, what, why, what, what's the correlation? The company that got the bid does a lot of pool business and has, um, uh, we've done a lot of checking with them and went over the bid with them, um, almost line item by line item to make sure they understood the bid and they told us absolutely they could handle it and they, they're in the business and do a lot of these types of conversions. Okay. Who did we use last year? For the new filters? Yeah, for, for this type of work. Uh, the new filters were through a different company. Okay. Um, Oh, gosh. Oh, that's okay. Well, uh, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Different type of system. Difference, right? old, yeah, that the was the system, filters right. themselves, right. Okay. yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Next is 4B, award of bid, Emerson Williams School Drainage Project. Can I have a motion? Motion to award the bid for Emerson Williams School Pipe Repairs to J.A. Rosa, construction of Walcott, Connecticut, in the amount of $45,450 and to authorize the use of drainage reserve funds. And a second? Second. A second. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, as part of the CIP project, uh, it was approved to include the uh, installation of rear, rear yard drainage along the Emerson School boundary with the neighborhood. Uh, we solicited the bids, and the bids came in at $45,000, $5,000 over, that, but that was the lowest bid. The bids ranged from $45,450 to $123,000, so we had quite a spread and more than 10 bidders. Um, the drainage work to be done, it, it not only includes a pipe paralleling, paralleling the property line, but if you look at the, the map, we also have some perpendicular drainage pipes that uh, provide better overall drainage to the site through those perforated uh, per, uh, perpendicular pipes. So uh, staff's recommending approval of this project is going to do a lot to make those fields uh, more usable and uh, help the drainage in that neighborhood. Any questions? I think it's amazing there were 19 bidders. Yeah. <laughs> so that gives they me, were all that gives me a lot of hope that our high school project will be way under budget, right? Yeah. Dave? Yeah, I, I was telling Jeff, I keep Keeps saying 19, that. People, 19 people showed up for this project. That's right. a scary thought. Councilor Cockin, your question? Just one, one quick question. I'm trying to, do you, Jeff, do you know which prop, private properties are subject to flooding? Is it the, the ones directly behind the school? I think it's the ones at the bottom of the hill? Yes. Yes. Okay, Out, along the, that walkway that goes sort of, okay. All right. Is it like one, two, three, do you know, uh, Brian? I think there's three, and there's actually been some trees that have fallen over because they're just too wet. Oh, right. Oh. 
Let me just let me tell my wife before she's. Th this is another one of these CIP projects that was kicking around a long time. And finally, actually, they got to oh, it, so. Yeah, yeah if, if you look at Emerson, Emerson Williams from Wells Farm Drive, yeah. you have to go all the way down to the end of the property where it bounds the um, wintergreen woods. And so it's probably the, the, from the bottom of Wells Farm going back up the street, three or four properties where it's extremely wet. If you've walked down there at all, yeah. it's it's just and it's knocking trees over so that will help s significantly for those properties and, and that area also in the winter i mean you, it, it gets wet it ices it so it's pretty actually it's pretty treacherous it that, is that walkway walking through there so would will this help keep that walkway drier well i mean i think that we're not going to do much about winter green woods because that's very wet but it certainly will help that area along the edge of the property i'm just saying like the kids walking through that path to school if it's yeah it's, most of them actually don't now they kind of walk up and around and oh, really? maybe cut through some of the other neighbor properties okay. okay thank you you're welcome any other questions we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is minutes for the regular meeting of February 19th. Can I have a motion? <clears throat> motion to approve. Second. Uh, any corrections, omissions, deletions? Councilor Cocken? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. There was one place where we were talking about the investment options. Um, and I think there was, I can't find the word, what the word was, but I think we're talking about re, REIT as one of the three investment options. Yeah, that was in my comment um, uh, on uh, page three, the right before council comments, the last sentence, it's 5%. All right. REITS. Any other corrections? So 60% equity is 5%. All those in favor signify oh, by right. saying yes. aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Abstentions? Thank you. Um, are there any members of the public wishing to speak? Ms. Rue? Can make an additional comment? Yeah, Good. after I've got some, I already okay. called on somebody. Okay. But yes, you can speak again. <clears throat> My name is Barbara Rue. I live at 79 Main Street. I think it would be a brilliant idea to have a generator to run the library. Having survived for eight days and nine nights with no heat during the great ice storm or snowstorm of last year, the library would have been a delightful place to go to get warm. And I think that as the community center as a shelter was really terrific and there were a lot of terrific services and everybody benefited, there were a lot of people who just needed a warm place and some entertainment. And they were a little short of entertainment at the community center. so. I think the library is a great place to have a generator. Um, secondly, I like to think that my many years of Girl Scouting was a very positive experience. I think that particularly at the time I was growing up in the 50s and 60s where there were not many role models for girls, that Girl Scouts provided an opportunity to learn many things and to learn to stand up and speak out because um, well, many people think I learned that solely from my father. I did not. Um, so I'm delighted that Girl Scouts were recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Other members of the public? Mr. Lefebvre, if you'd like to come up. I think, as I said earlier, uh, I've been working on this for about 10 weeks. The first week, I did a lot of fact-finding. And one of the things that I made sure of was that there were no signs posted, OK? Um, there are signs in the, in the back and over the public entranceway that says, no trespassing, no soliciting, please take notice. That does not constitute a tow sign, OK, with Central Garage. Subsequently, I believe Ray Ann, um, Economic Development, contacted Night it's, um, and they did put up two signs, but there are three entranceways. There's one by the Hartford Hospital, there's one in the main entrance, but there's nothing on the south. You can still come in here the way I came in there and not see any signs. Now, I have an audio file where I walked the property. I submitted it. I spoke to Officer Liberator, Liberatory, okay, and we talked at length 
about the signs. Where am I supposed to find it? I called Central Garage. They were supposed to meet me there. I had Officer Gonzalez there Saturday morning to, when I was going to meet with uh, Goudreau. Didn't show up. Supposed to meet me on Monday. Doesn't show up. I keep calling back. Where are the signs? The officers told me hearsay. Oh, we've been told there are signs. Well, who told you there were signs? I got this big runaround. What am I supposed to do? Okay? I'd like to mention one other thing. Um, I, I beg to differ. You know, uh, I, I did mention that um, Lieutenant Herwith has sent a, a letter out to the tow companies stating that they must comply with the VIN number, the, the make and model, the state plate, okay, uh, everything that's on the H-14, H-114, he's requesting um, within two hours or he's going to cite an infraction because they have a problem in Glastonbury, okay. Um, I should mention one other thing. In the broadcast on Fox News, it was stated that uh, the Harvard Current uh, had Central Garage as uh, with a contract for the coming toll from their property. Subsequently, they've canceled the contract. Okay. Um, so th those are the, 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 the glaring parts. You know, there are no signs. There never were any signs. They lied to me. The signs. Well, I don't know if there never were, but signs were subsequently put up. And one of them says, "24/7 unauthorized vehicles will be towed." Okay. Well, what does that mean? 24-7 unauthorized? Okay. To Panera, I called Antonio Santos uh, at Panera. I w spoke to H&R Block. I went to Lane Bryant. I went to the liquor store. I went to everybody. They're all outraged at what Nidets is doing. Okay. And I believe that the state law specifically protects us by H-145 that addresses Illegal trespass toes. The owner who calls it in, and even in the contract, okay, and in the state law, it says that the owner agent must call it in. The form says they must sign it or have their signature put in. Okay, that H-114 would have been evidence that I could take to court. I haven't gotten there yet through small claims court because I have all these issues. I've been waiting with the DMV. I've been gathering as much information to show how disreputable, okay, Central Garage is because they don't respond to me. NIDITS doesn't respond to me. I've made legal requests. They won't respond to me. They didn't respond to the DMV. They ignored the DMV under the suspension rule, okay? Where are we going here? Now, I'd like you to take a look. I submitted it. I'd like you to take a look at the contract. The contract is ludicrous. How can you have a contract between A and B that says specifically a big no that the owner of the vehicle must pay the fine? Tell me what contract you can do that. A can contract with B and force C to pay. I, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Um, there's other language in the contract that I think it says in here that it must be posted. Well, it wasn't posted. And I, I don't want to go over that over and over again because I walked the property. If you have any questions, I will answer some questions. Otherwise, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Other members of the public wishing to speak? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, I, I know you're in, in, the, in the process of the budgets, and uh, I just want to urge you to consider all the old people, the seniors, the 20-some percent that we have in this town. We have 8-plus percent unemployed people in the state of Connecticut, and Weathersfield has its share. We have a lot of young people that have graduated from college who don't have jobs, who own cars that would end up paying a tax. We have those who, in the middle of their life, lifestyle, life, uh, work life, that are uh, losing their jobs as well. 
and then trying to relocate somewhere else, taking all, taking not on up and pay, they're going this way, pay-wise. And of course, we have the old seniors who have a lot of money or some money in the bank with these uh, certificates that get extremely little interest. Putting them, putting everybody in a bind, dollar-wise. And when taxes go up, it hurts extremely hard. And I hope that you would consider the fact that you have squeezed so much from the taxpayers over the years that you need to contract. As I said before, we're looking at the federal side that is going to be contracting, and it's going to be an ongoing 10-year process. It's not going to increase. It's going to be contracting. The state of Connecticut, which is, you just, you're going after a grant now for $245,000 for generators, they're bankrupt. They, they're, they, they had to get a half a billion dollar line of credit just to pay their normal bills. Are they using it? I don't know. But they got it. And now here we are. We're, we're moving in on, on the magic number of uh, uh, April 15th when people send their taxes in. And many of them get returns. And we don't know, from what I'm hearing, the returns are coming back extremely slow. They're analyzing them as much as possible because they don't have the money to put into the check to send back to that person who filed. There's an extreme cash flow problem up at the state capitol and in Washington. And that's going to totally affect us right here in this little town of Weathersfield. And you need to do something, and I'm urging you, for the sake of the, these people that are having hard times, to do something in reductions. I mean, if it includes the uh, need of reducing classrooms in the, in the schools, you've got to do that. You've got to find ways, consolidate groups. Board side, town side, one, it's one organization. You've got to go through that. You haven't had a charter revision in a long time. When you got on board, Mayor, what, four years, I don't know, four or six years ago? That was one of the things I asked. You know, I was making a suggestion. I haven't seen that yet. And in that, it should be you're going to consolidate these groups to make this group, this organization, more efficient. More people is what they've been doing in, 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 here. We've been growing, yeah. And, and, and we're not doing things smart. We have computers that came into being 10, 15, 20 years ago because they were supposed to make us work faster and really eliminate people on the job. That hasn't happened. <laughs> we still got a lot of people working, but um, the computer and the computers are with them. But the increase didn't come out. And as I mentioned at the last time, uh, the last meeting, over the last 23 years, we have had a net zero increase in employment when the rest of the entire country had up. I, th I, th I don't remember what the number was. 48 million. People were employed in other states, but Connecticut was flat over 23 years. And that's because your taxes are just too high. And businesses don't want to come here. You know, I heard you talking tonight about the farm up on, um, on High, High, Highcrest Street. And oh yeah, we got to do this, we got to do that. And I'm sitting back here saying, gee, no, that's not very friendly, you know? You're going to go try to chase those guys out with those trucks, get them out of there. I, I don't know what their deal is. It's none of my business. That's private property. As long as they pay their road tax, they buy their, buy their tickets, their uh, registrations, and they do business, uh, that's, that's all accounts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Young.
Other members of the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you.